Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so, so much for coming. This is live diagramming of K-Native core concepts. I'm Whitney Lee, and I'm going to dig in a little bit about my history. This seems rather vain, right? But here it is. Um, I am a career changer into tech, and I spent most of my adult life as a professional photographer. I owned a wedding photography business. I personally have photographed over 500 weddings, and my company, I think, did something like 1,200 weddings. And if I never go to a wedding ever again in my life, including my own, I am really okay with that. Um, really, in the end, though, the business ran me instead of me running the business. And when my brother's musical project, Mutual Benefits, gained some notoriety, he needed to put a band together to go on tour, and he invited me to be in the band. And I was like, heck yes. And I dissolved the business. I spent all my savings giving my couples back their deposit money. My partner at the time of eight years wasn't supportive, so they were out the door. And uh, I put all of my stuff into storage, and I toured in a band for a year. That was a very fun year, and hashtag no regrets. So then when I came back from that, I didn't know what to do with myself next. Then my son is in university at the time, getting a, a computer science degree. And he was like, Mom, I really think you would like this. I think you would like programming. And I, um, I, I did a little course, and he was right, like, yeah, this is super fun. So I went back to school to become a programmer. I did a boot camp. So in January of 2019, not very long ago, I wrote my very first line of code. Um, I did hundreds of hours of prep to get into a boot camp. A Hack Reactor is the brand. And once I was in the boot camp, it was 11-hour days, six days a week for three months. So that was July until October I graduated. And then in November of 2019, less than a year after writing my first line of code, I was employed at IBM as a cloud developer. And an extra funny part of this is I spent that whole time learning full-stack web development and then immediately got into the Kubernetes container space using none of the knowledge I spent that whole year learning. So um, I was on a pre-sales team, and we had a lot of downtime. So during that time, I um, made YouTube videos for the IBM Cloud YouTube channel. I was shocked they let me do it for as little experience as I had. And um, what I found was, because I have such little experience, I'm pretty good at explaining things at a really rudimentary, rudimentary level and in a way that everyone can understand. If I can understand it, then people, most other people can. Um, so I made about seven videos all in all for IBM. Uh, I haven't checked in a while, but last I checked altogether, they have like half a million views. Stuff like, what is Kafka? What is RabbitMQ? If you look up those videos even now, if you just Google those questions, you'll see my face. Much younger and more nervous, which uh, not that much younger. <laughs> and actually, probably, I'm ner more nervous now. Uh, so from there, I got a job as a, a VMware Tanzu, saw a spark in me, they hired me to be a full-time developer advocate, they gave me a light board, I have a light board in my home, and they empowered me to create a show for Tanzu Tot. TV called Enlightening. And in my show, I have experts in the field come on and teach me a cloud concept. And so if an expert can teach it to a beginner like me, then anyone, they have to bring the information down to a, a level that anyone can understand. And then I draw out the information as I learn it. So we have a record to make sure I, um, we're on course as we're learning. So this episode was with Rick Oswalski. He taught me how to add persistent storage to a Kubernetes cluster. So I've also done a couple episodes about Knative, a Knative serving episode and a Knative eventing episode with uh, maintainers on the project. If you want to see the show, it's called Enlightening. It's spelled like a lightning, like a bolt of lightning, not like enlightening. Anyway, and then I'm Wiggity Whitney on Twitter. So in the spirit of drawing to learn, I'm a very visual person. My, my degree's in fine art. Not that I'm good at drawing. It's in photography, remember. Um, I'm going to draw for you how Knative works and then jump back and forth between the console and actually using Knative. So we're going to start with our blank slates here. Um, this is adding to my nervousness. The, the, uh, this is my first time doing like live demo coding, so I'm, I'm, uh, my heart is 
bursting out of my chest. And so thank you in advance for thinking of me kindly, with a kind mind. Um, so we're going to talk about Knative. Knative is a technology that sits on top of Kubernetes, and it enhances and simplifies the way that your application runs on Kubernetes. So Knative, as you may know, it has two distinct parts, Knative serving and Knative eventing. And then today we're going to focus on Knative serving. So the, I'm going to repeat what I just said. Knative serving simplifies and enhances the way that your application runs on Kubernetes. So in order to really appreciate how much it simplifies how your application runs on Kubernetes, it's a good idea to know how you would deploy an application on vanilla Kubernetes. So to, do, to start that process, as a developer, you would package your application into a container image, and then you would create a Kubernetes deployment. Oops. You can see my handwriting's shaky. There's no getting around that either. OK, so we've created a Kubernetes deployment with, which manages a replica set. And inside of our replica set, we have one or many running pods. Now, the pod is the smallest unit of compute in Kubernetes, and the pod is what actually hosts your running application. So um, that doesn't seem so hard. Why do we need Knative? The problem here is that the application's running on Kubernetes. We did it, woo! But you can't get to it. And because Kubernetes is distributed, these pods could be all on different machines. And not only that, they each have an IP address. So technically, you could SSH onto the node and curl the IP and be able to get your, at your application. But if your application stops working, the whole pod goes down, and then a new pod comes up with a whole new IP address. So that would not be a practical way to go. So as a developer, you'd create a service to solve those problems. It will keep track of the IP addresses and keep track of which nodes it's running on, and it will also load balance the requests for your nodes. So it provides a consistent endpoint. So OK, that's a little complex. But this is only to access your application from within the cluster. To access your application from external to the cluster, you need an ingress. So with an ingress, that's going to be concerned with DNS, but it's also going to be concerned with uh, TLS if you want secure applications. So you might need to install a, a cert manager. And then you'll also need to automatically, uh, excuse me, manually configure certs for any different domain name you want to hit. Then if you want your application to scale, you also have to configure a horizontal pod auto scaler. If you want your application to be able to access configuration and secrets, you'll need to create objects for that, a config map and secrets. OK, so this is officially a pain in the butt. We don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. So how does Knative serving help with this situation? So with Knative Serving, the first thing you need to do is install Knative into your cluster. And that um, is getting more and more simple. I have a Google, once we get into the terminal, I have created a, a GKE cluster, and I was able to install Knative into it with my limited experience. And, um, but also, there are ways we can do that on the laptop, which I'll talk about shortly. But then imperatively, we'll be able to use the KN CLI commands and do a KN service creates command. And then we have to name our service. We'll call our sunshine. And then we supply it with an image. Let's call it rainbows. So when we do that, we will can expect for Knative to return the URL of our running application for us to be able to access it from without, outside of the cluster. So everything that just happened here that we just talked about is either uh, created in Kubernetes or, or some sort of equivalent so that all that functionality is taken care of for us. So let's go into the terminal and see it work. 
Uh, um, ooh, it's working. Great. So here goes my second ever live coding demonstration. Let's do, um, I think, uh, Silka. <laughs> um, I think in my nervousness, I didn't, great. So we have no services here, and we can see that, um, okay, excuse me. I'm going to just move this around. Cool. So I have secret commands that are purposely too small for you to read, so you can't look ahead. So I'm going to show Knative running. And so we can see we're getting all the pods in the namespace Knative serving. And so we can see that Knative's running. And these are the, the resources that's been created with the Knative installment. Uh, the activator and the autoscaler are two that we're going to talk about later. Um, so we're going to create a service. I'm going to just, well, and we're going to call our service. Well, so we have Knative service create, just like we talked about. We're going to call our service Sunshine One, and then we're supplying it with an image. It's my repository. Our, our application is called Rainbows, and then I'm tagging it with version one. So we're going to run this command, and what we expect is to get a URL where we can access our running application. And there it is. So let's, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's put it in a browser. Bum -ba -da -da. A very important business critical application of static image of rainbows. Da -da -da -da. And then it gets better than that, even. So we're going to do, we're going to describe the service. And our, when I installed Knative into the cluster, I enabled auto TLS and did some extra uh, configuring. And therefore, whenever we create a service, it takes a beat, but it has that sweet, sweet S that shows that it's a secure service. So I know it's a pain in the butt to have to secure, to configure secure applications. And that's not something developers need to worry. Look at that sweet padlock. I don't know if you can see it up there. Duh. So we can see connection is secure and um, they're looking good. So I'm going to jump back to drawing. Well, we can look at the, yeah. Actually, let's talk about the YAML. So when we made all of those objects, not only do we need to have YAML for every single one of them, we're also configuring labels and selectors so that they can all talk to each other. So it ends up being like, like lines and lines of YAML. Like at the very minimum, maybe 40 lines, and really with all the bells and whistles, we're getting up over 100. So, I, um, so we're going to cat out what a Knative serving. So what I just did in order to do it for in a YAML, instead of with command line, it's just these 10 lines of code. So much easier, except our sunshine should be called sunshine one and not, I messed that up because I was so nervous that I forgot, never mind. You wouldn't have noticed if I didn't point it out, there I go. So that is how, so if you, if you remember nothing else from this presentation, remember that Knative simplifies the way your applications are deployed onto Kubernetes, and the, the difference is vast. And yeah, so now we're going to go back to drawing. I don't know about you, but when I learn something new, like a new fact, like say the fact is Knative really helps your application be deployed easily on Kubernetes, just off the cuff, um, that fact will stick with me maybe an hour, maybe two hours. Maybe if it's a good one until the next day. But if I understand how something works rather just than it does work, then it'll help that really stick with me. So I'm going to draw out for you next how, what's going on under the hood to make all of this happen. So what we did was we created a Knative service. The Knative service, I think, is important here to disambiguate the Knative service from our Kubernetes service. For me personally, the fact that they're both called a service, and in the Knative docs it just says service, it doesn't say Knative service, um, that confused me. They're totally different abstractions. So the Knative service under the hood is creating a root object, and the root is concerning itself with the Kubernetes service and ingress and just rooting traffic. 
And then it's also going to create a configuration object. The configuration is con concerned with pod specifications. So it's also going to be concerned with um, environment variables, or your port number, or your image, or a PVC, like your persistent volume claim for your, how your application is going to access storage from outside. So it's, it's concerned with those sorts of things. And then your configuration is going to manage a stream of revisions. So right now, we just made revision one. So a revision is a snapshot in time of your application code and your configuration together in one object. And whenever new, uh, whenever you change anything about your service, it's not going to change the revision. Instead, it's going to create a new revision in the stream of revisions. So if you change something vast, like a huge update to your image, then it's going to um, it's it's going to make a new revision. But also, if you just change, like you decide to camel case one of your variables, like the smallest thing you can think of, that'll also spin up a brand new revision. So the revision is associated with some some Kubernetes resources. Let's match colors to above. So the revision has a deployment object associated with it, a Kubernetes deployment. Also, the replica set inside, and then also one or many running pods. So basically, not even basically, literally the exact same, um, this part of it, the exact same deployment going on here. So that's where a running application is still in our Kubernetes pod here. The other resource that gets made at this time or that we wanna, I want to add right now is an autoscaler which we'll talk about shortly. So what happens is when we call our application, it, the traffic comes in through the root. The root by default is going to send 100% to the latest revision, and then the revision will send it on to the running application, and your, the end user is able to access the running application in this way. So that's what's going on under the hood. So um, I want to start a list of benefits, because there are many, and we're going to want to remember them all. So we talked about less YAML, so ease of deployment. I'm going to say less YAML. And we also talked about auto TLS, that sweet, sweet S. And that's all we have so far. So I want to go ahead and show you these objects all in the terminal. So let's switch back over. I'm going to stop mirroring. We have our terminal. Awesome. So I'm going to show all of our resources that are associated with a cube cuddle command. So I'm asking Kubernetes to show us all of the resources associated with our, our Knative service. I started to fix this warning application, this warning message, and like update the auth. And then I was like, this is a really bad thing to do right before my demo if I, if I mess up my cluster. So, um, so what I want to show you is we have pods running, Kubernetes pods. We have Kubernetes services. We have a Kubernetes deployment and Kubernetes replica set. So everything we drew out there. And then we have our Knative. So we can see this is a Knative resource. So we have our Knative service that created the Knative root, the Knative configuration, and the Knative revision. So we can see all of that happening under the hood. Um, so now, let's go back to drawing. I had nightmares about not being able to switch back and forth between these two very easily. So when I first heard about Knative, I was on that pre-sales team. I was on an event-driven architecture was our specialty. And there was someone else on my team during our weekly stand-up who would go talk about Knative. And I didn't really know what it was, and I was busy learning literally everything else that I could. It just wasn't important. So I didn't, I like Googled it, and it's like Knative, and then it's like, okay, it's serverless. Like even the Knative docs, it's like serverless, serverless, serverless. So we're like halfway through this presentation, and I'm just now 
saying the word serverless. So uh, I want to make the point that serverless is awesome, it's cool, it's, I don't think it's, I think it's a benefit of Knative and not the benefit of Knative. So serverless, instead of saying serverless, I much prefer to say scale to zero. So if your application sits still long enough, the pod is going to disappear. So this is different from Kubernetes that has to have running pods at all times in order to be able to access your running application. But with Knative, a company can save a lot of time for seldom used applications or maybe applications that are only used during certain hours of the day, for example, or certain times of the year for, say, Christmas-related things. So the Knative community has a joke that the scaling to zero is actually the easy part. The hard part is scaling from zero to one. So what will happen is if you have no pods running and your application gets a request, we have another resource called an activator. The activator is a namespaced resources. So this is, um, so I talked to you about these, this before. When at the up top, when I showed all the Knative resources, I pointed out the activator and the autoscaler. So if we get a request while our pod is down, that request is coming through to the revision, but the activator knows that revision one is currently inactive. So the activator is going to receive that request and it, uh, it caches the request, so it has it handy waiting for the pod to come up. And the activator is like, yo, autoscaler, we need a pod. And autoscaler is like, yo, Kubernetes deployment, we need a pod. And then the Kubernetes deployment makes a pod. And then we have, and then the requests are able to get from the activator through to the running application and it's served. Um, a note about the autoscaler, I do want to say that um, besides scale to zero, another thing that makes the autoscaler really cool in Knative is that it scales based on number of requests. So it scales based on concurrency. This is different from our Kubernetes horizontal pod, horizontal pod autoscaler. It scales based on compute and memory. And this can be a harder problem to solve because you need to know what resources you have available to you. Also, what the um, Kubernetes autoscaler enables is functions as a service use cases. So functions as a service is when your application is meant to only serve one, one uh, request at a time. And there's also a project called Knative Functions that even abstracts away the Knative part of it and allows you to make functions independent of language very easily. I don't know if I did a good job describing that, but uh, Mauricio over there is the working group leader and asked me to give a shout out to Knative Functions. So, that's <laughs> so Knative Functions, okay, and then we have a concurrency here. So it scales based on concurrency. All right, so we've hung out here. Let's see if our application has scaled to zero in real life while I was here droning on, killing time so that it would. So this is exciting. I'm nervous. Not, you know, excited nervous to see. So I'm going to do um, the, a get pods command to see if we have any pods running in our namespace. Oh, we, oh it is running. Shoot. What? It's not, oh, this is a deployment. Yes. So we, yes, we have no pods running. I don't know why the, see, I'm a, a novice, but um, no pods running, that's great. So what I want to do is, <laughs> is um, I want to do a watch commands. I'm going to, so we're going to watch our pods. So no pods here. So we're going to watch this. What's happening? That's a pod. That's what I thought. But it, it's terminating. So I guess I just didn't. I don't know. So maybe we can. I'm trying to think if there's something I can skip ahead to while we come back to this. Anyway, I don't know why they didn't disappear for me. But when you 
inevitably play with this on your own because it's so much fun. And you go to the knative.dev website and work it through the tutorial there, you'll get to do an example of, of, um, of scale to zero. And you can see that they are terminating even though they haven't terminated. And so now we have this watch command on our pod. So if I come through, let me, and get our URL, here we are, and run it here. Okay, so we, let's get back to our watch command. So we have, why is it creating? Driving me nuts. Okay, so anyway, it will spin up on its own. I don't know what I, um, do you, I think when we practice, Anyway, I think I know why. I figured it out. It has to do with practicing earlier. Um, so what I want to do now that we've not demonstrated scale to zero, but I seem so confident you believe that it works, right? Uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, give a link shortener, and I'm going to give you the QR code so you can, lo you can load this amazing uh, static image of spiders website on your own phones. So here's our QR code. And so I'm gonna make some changes to this application and it'll be fun to watch how it, how it gets deployed and how it changes in real life. So now there's no way it'll scale to zero with all of y'all. That's why I waited until this point to share. So we have this route application. It 100% scales to zero. And we together in this room, we're part of a company, we're the leadership of a, a cutting edge company where we um, rule the world in serving static images of rainbows. We are the best at it and we don't want anyone to be able to take us down. So for that reason, we need to stay on the cusp of what the people want. Like we need to read our Gardner reports, we need to have a think tank, we need to really be thinking outside of the box to make sure we stay ahead of the game and we retain our dominance in this industry. So after doing all of that research, what we've decided, we, the people, where we think the industry might be moving and we want to do some testing is we think that maybe we need um, a static image of spiders. So that's going to be the next thing that we make. So in order to do that, excellent, in order to do that, we're going to update our service. So instead of Knative service create, we're doing Knative service update. And then we're going to update it with a new image that is a static image of spiders. Now, we don't want to roll this out to the general public yet. We need to test it, and it's top secret. We only want certain people to be able to access it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give our second revision a tag and we're going to tag it spiders. And what will happen is when a, a request comes in to the root that's tagged with spiders, that is going to go through to our second revision. And the second revision, I don't have room to draw it here, but it also has its own Kubernetes deployment, its own Kubernetes pods, its own version of, of uh, all the Kubernetes set of resources. It's going to send those requests only through to, to that second revision's worth uh, running application. Otherwise, 100% of traffic is still going to revision one, and our end users are none the, uh, none the wiser to our secret spiders website. So let's make it. Let's go back to the terminal. All right. So watching pods, my. All right. So we're going to create a custom route. I'm copy pasting. Here we are. So Knative service updates. We are updating our Sunshine 1 service. We're adding a V2 of our application, so we're changing the image that we want. We're tagging, giving that spiders tag, using that tag flag, but then we're specifying that we want 100% of traffic still to go to our first revision, revision one. So that's what this command is doing. So 
Excellent. So we have this, but this is exactly the, the same uh, URL as before. So our URL is still serving our rainbows, which is exactly what we want. In order to see the spiders, this is what you do. At the beginning of the URL, before the word sunshine, write the word spiders, and then a dash, spiders-sunshine1.jbcn and the rest. And then when you, you go through that tigers, woo, that tag, we just went through to our spiders application. So I think that was awesome, and I think I want to write about it in my journal of benefits for Knative. Excellent. So we have as our benefits scale to zero. And then also tag based routing. Awesome. OK, so we've done all the testing. People are digging the spiders. Like we're like, yes, we're, we're, we're doing a good job. Our team is amazing. We're, we're, we're doing it. But here's the thing. The, the visionaries of the company are like, why does it have to be spiders or rainbows? Why can't it be both? So we're going to make a spider rainbows application, and now we're confident enough in this one that we want our end users to be able to access it. So we're going to create a third revision. And this has our spiders rainbows application. And I just want to back up for a second and say, Every time we're doing a new revision here, it's with a new image. But I want to just reiterate that if we change anything about this, it's going to spin up a new revision, so an environment variable, uh, anything at all. So we have a revision three, spider rainbows. And we are a responsible company, and we're not going to just, you may remember I said by default the root sends 100% of traffic onto the first revision. So that is not something we would want in real life. So what we want, we're going to do some more testing. And so when a request comes into the root now, we want 90% still to go to the revision that we know is safe, and then maybe send only 10% to our uh, revision 3, just to give it, give it a test. So let's, let's do that in the terminal. So we're going to send 10% of traffic to the newest revision. So here's what's going on on the command, knative service update sunshine1. We're giving it a new image, version 3. Um, we're saying we're giving the traffic flag to say we want 90% of traffic to go here, and a traffic flag to say 10% going to the latest. So um, the traffic flag will give you a hard time if your numbers don't add up to 100%, as it should. So here we go, and now we're ready. So if you want to spam, you have to take the spider's tag away now, remember? But if you want to spam the service, let's see. Oh, oh no, I didn't, I didn't get the good one. So I, um, but instead of doing that, well, you all do that, I'm going to, oh, I misspelled a thing. Do you know what? That's why I have this here. So we can see that 10%, by describing our service, we can see that 10% is going to the latest and 90% is going to Sunshine, our first revision. So go team. Twitter, like the little bit of people who are getting it, Twitter is blowing up. We're like, yeah, 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 we're doing it. And so what we want now, we're ready to roll out the whole thing. But we don't want the tedium of having to manually be like, OK, now 20%. OK, all right, enough time, now 30%. We're confident enough that we can say over the next eight hours, we want to roll our traffic from the revision one to revision three. So we're going to do a duration-based rollout. So let's, I don't think that needs to be captured in the drawing. Let's just do it. So to do the duration-based rollout, I'm going to do a watch command on our service. So with this watch command, we're watching 10% now is here and 10% on our, our sunshine. And then I'm going to run this command that will do a, a rollout for us. So we'll talk it through real quick. K 
Knative service updates on trend one, we have, we're saying we have, in the end of our duration, we want 100% of traffic to be going to our latest version. And then we're adding an annotation to the YAML to, to add this rollout duration. And I'm gonna do it in 60 seconds instead of eight hours. So here we can see just time. It's just telling us it's rolling out, it's rolling out, it's rolling out, so yeah. But it's nicer, I think, to look at our, our watch on our service so we can see the traffic dripping from one to the other. Also, if you feel like spamming it, you can also see it happening in real life in the application. So now I think with that, it's probably time to update our journal with the benefits. Actually, before I do, do you know what I think would be nice is to, we've changed enough now, we changed the annotation on the serving YAML, like maybe it's a good idea to just, to just know that all of these changes are being captured somewhere. So, oh, but I can't do it with that within the minute. Okay, while we're waiting on that, I'm gonna flip over here. All right, so let's update our, our so we have tag-based routing, we can do traffic splitting, we can do duration-based rollout. Sweet. And then um, all of that, if we can just show our Knative serving YAML with the, I can show it later, but um, to see whatever is happening in the moment, we have a view of that captured in one place. <coughs> Excuse me. So the problem is, like, people are just losing their minds over how amazing the spider rainbows are, but when we introduced the spiders, we relied on this dependency that some witches made, and there's a CVE in there, and we're like, oh, dang. So we need to hurry up and roll back before the witches can exploit the, the vulnerability they've put in our application. So maybe, as you can imagine from the commands you've already seen, um, rolling back is a pretty great benefit. So we can very easily just, we have 100% right now of our traffic going to revision three, and we can very easily make, put 100% right back to revision one. So let's do it. All right. So we roll back to the, okay, well, let's do the, we'll look at the YAML briefly. So we have um, a source of truth here for our, all of the changes we're making. So the, the, the like the roll it, rollout duration, for example, is represented here. But that's, that's boring, let's do the fun stuff. Let's, um, so we're gonna roll back to the latest safe version. And so, so we have Knative service update Sunshine 1. We have our traffic flag, and we're saying we want 100% of traffic to go back to revision 1. So let's do it. We can see on our phones and in real life that we have just rainbows here. I should have put the spiders on the screen. But that's OK. You live, you learn. OK, I, I don't want to end with the witches winning. So I want to do one more rollout. We've patched our CVE. We made our spiders grin super big just to make the witches mad. And so we have a new application we're gonna roll out, revision four. Yeah. And we're saying service update, uh, our sunshine one. Oops. We're adding our image, this is version four with smiling spiders just to stick it to the witches. And then we're saying we want 100% of traffic to go to the latest. So we need to specify that. If we didn't specify that, 100% of traffic would still be going to our regular rainbows. Oh, and it's gradually rolling out. That's a great thing to mention. So we looked at that YAML and the gradual rollout was there. Since we didn't remove the gradual rollout, that's staying the same in between. So it's gonna take a minute, but we, I'm gonna get some smiling spiders. Oh. They're not smiling. They are smiling, but not as big as I wanted them to. All right, so 
In conclusion, here we are. We have to keep our drawing accurate. We made a revision four with some smiling spiders. And now all 100% of our traffic by the time our rollout is over is going to go through to revision four. Just a reminder that revision four and all the revisions have their own um, Kubernetes resources underneath. So it goes to its own Kubernetes deployment and pods. And then it's getting served up and our business stays on top and the witches can't get us down. And so that is, that is the conclusion more or less of my presentation. Knative, not only is it scaled to zero, AKA serverless, but it also makes your deployments much easier with less YAML. You have auto TLS, so it'll be a secure application without the developer having to configure that part. You have uh, concurrency, so you have um, uh, the scaling happens based on the number of requests, which also enables functions as a service use cases for when you have one request per application. Um, we, can, we have their tag-based routing for your secret, super secret spiders applications. Uh, we can split traffic easily between revisions. We can roll out our duration and we can roll back easily. So if you wanna get your hands dirty with it, you should go to knative, knative.dev and do the tutorial. So that's going to, with that, you'll be able to spin up um, a Kubernetes cluster on your laptop with Kind. So that stands for Kubernetes in Docker, Kind. You'll spin up a Kind cluster, and then you'll be able to install um, Knative easily onto that following the, the instructions. There's a quick start plugin as part of the CLI. Um, a, a quick note about installing Knative, well, is another thing that I heard about Knative before I got to know Knative better is that Knative is heavy. Like you have to install Istio with Knative and it makes it heavy and cumbersome and maybe takes up more resources than you want. So while Istio does work, um, Istio, it also now works with lighter weight networking implementation, implementations like Contour, and Courier, but even better than that, um, Kubernetes has an API gateway specification, and that's a newer thing. I just heard about it. And so the way like a container runtime is, is being standardized, uh, there's now like standardization or uh, 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 storage implementations have been standardized for Kubernetes. Now they're, they're doing that standardization with networking implementations. So any networking implementation that works with the API gateway Kubernetes standardization will work with Knative or is, will soon, yes. And then um, when you, so you have your Knative, cluster on your, on your laptop and it's going to send you through traffic splitting and scale to zero and you can do all those things so you don't just have to take my word on it on the scale to zero part. And um, when you do it, use kubectl. It'll just tell you all the Knative stuff, but use kubectl to see what's happening under the hood. You can see, in fact, I think, let's go out on, well, here's, this is the last thing I'm going to say. One is, this is so annoying, but follow me on Twitter. It's like, as a developer advocate, it's like used as a metric of success in my field. So um, Twitter's fine, I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. But anyway, I'm really selling this, right? So please follow me on Twitter. Please come watch the Enlightening Show. We have a really active and fun and kind chat, and it's lovely to be a part of it. And then, um, I also have stickers. I have stickers promoting the show and stickers for Knative. So please see me afterward and come get stickers or anytime you see me around at all, I have stickers in my bag. So please come get some. Thank you so much for being super fun and awesome during my, one of my very first live demo talks. And you didn't, I really appreciate all of you very much. Thank you. Yay. 
I'll say one more thing. During um, next week's episode, so, so they're on every Thursday, has our friend Victor, uh, here we are, teaching about cross-plane, the cross-plane project. So Victor's here, and I just want to show off, we, we're doing that one next week. And past episodes, you can find them all here. I'm sure if you... Uh, I can make a QR code for that too. Actually, um, maybe I can just do this while y'all talk amongst yourselves. You don't have to. We're done. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, um, sorry, Whitney. I don't know if we have uh, time oh, for questions. Oh, questions. Yes, yeah. please. So there is one question in the mobile application. It's uh, could you show how does it go together with infrastructure as a code approach? With an infrastructure as code approach. With, a, with an infrastructure as a code approach, yes. So hypothetically, could you use Knative with an infrastructure as code approach? Yes. I, uh, infrastructure as code has to do with defining your objects. And usually that's going to be de defined outside of your cluster, because if your cluster goes down, you want a means to be able to recreate it. And then uh, the Kubernetes objects are just extensions of Kubernetes, so the whole uh, Kubernetes resource object model is also what's, what Knative is using. So that's the long answer. The short answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. Microphones are open if anyone else has a question. Yes. Thank you. Great talk. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And uh, did you do any, anything special to build the image that you deployed? Because uh, from past time, I uh, tried uh, Project Reef, which I think it's super old. But there was a part uh, to build images for uh, this kind of serverless uh, uh, infrastructure. So, uh -huh. But in this case, for this demo, did you did uh, something special to build your image? Or in any image would work? Um, so I built my container image using pack, so, so using the build packs project. And I don't see, I, I know it would definitely work with Docker files too. I don't know any reason, as long as your, if your image runs anywhere, it would also work with Knative. Yes. So, and what was the technology you said that you used? It was called Project Reef. Project, I, project I Reef. I think it's uh, like uh, the grandfather of uh, Knative. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's meant to work with any it, container it image. <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, uh, at some point, it were like uh, similar. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? No. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Whitney. Thank you so much again. I appreciate you.